Welcome back to Senka Sen Community College. This is our office hour session where we answer your questions and break things down in a clear and simple way. In this one, we're gonna answer the question, what if I just wanna make a simple L bracket? So grab your notes and let's get into it. A simple bracket is also a great part that we can end up learning CAD from. Let's come over to the board and think about what we want to draw first though. Now, a simple bracket could be something for a shelf, right? Just an L bracket that we're going to end up mounting to the wall. So let's go ahead and draw just a side profile of what we're wanting to get. If we have that, we're going to end up having a length and a height to it. Let's just make this be four inches and maybe be a little bit longer, six inches. We also need to think about a thickness, right? If this is going to be a shelf, maybe we want it to be a little thicker, have a little bit more weight. Let's assign that material to be um, 125 aluminum, right? So we're going to have a little bit thicker. It's lightweight being aluminum. And with a bend in it, we're going to need it to be 50-52. So we're kind of building out what we're going to end up doing with this part. So even simple things, though, we need to think through, though, and have a good understanding of what we're trying to go with. Now, if I look at this from, say, a top profile, so we're just going to roll this thing up. We're going to end up having a part, this would be the flange that's kind of coming at us, and we're going to need some mounting holes in it, and we're going to need to figure out what this width is. Now let's just say two inches, right? We're going to make a nice wide flange, and we'll have some mounting holes for some screws at an eighth of an inch in diameter, right? We're going to end up having four of these, so we're going to end up putting two of them on this and two of them on here. We're also going to want to make sure that there's some space here. So let's just say that this is one inch away, and then we'll put the space between these holes here at, say, uh, where we're at four inches. We'll end up doing that space to be two inches. So we're an inch away from here. Now that we kind of understand, generally speaking, we're going to make this L. Let's go ahead and draw it in CAD, starting off with creating that sketch for that base plane. So we're going to come up, click Create Sketch, click on that plane, and this is where we get that first orientation that we're going to end up doing. Let's go ahead and draw the bottom of what we ended up doing there on the board. So we're going to click Rectangle and draw out that rectangle. Now, I like to do things when I'm teaching separately from essentially having it automatically do the construction um, and constraints because I want to show you guys what's happening behind the scenes. So we drew this rectangle here, and if you remember, when blue, we can move it around, right? So it's not constrained to anything. Let's go ahead and make it so that this origin is the center of this line here. It's going to lock it a little bit in space. So we're going to click midpoint in our constraints. We're going to click origin, and we're going to click that line. Now this is going to make it so that you can see the line has turned black, but these ends here are still blue. We can change that width and we can change that length. With that, we just wrote on the board what we want those dimensions to be. So let's come back up. We can go to create dimension, or we can just click up here. I have it on a, uh, locked in. Click on that and we can do four inches long. And then we can also set this at that two inches wide. Now this is gonna be a pretty fat, heavy bracket, but this will work. With that, we need to draw in those two circles that we wanted in the center. The best way that I like to do this is to go ahead and create a line, and we're gonna create a construction line. So we're gonna come over here to that construction area. We're gonna click on the midpoint here. So this is automatically assigning that midpoint, and then we're gonna come over here and click on the origin. So what I did is created a construction line that bisects this rectangle and allows us to add those holes centered already. We can come up here, click on circle, and we can add our circle, but we're on construction right now. So if we have a construction circle that we want to switch over, we can simply click on it, click on construction again, and it turns it back into a solid feature. We're going to add another circle here. Oh, we're still on construction. Let's go ahead and fix that again. And we'll turn off construction moving forward. Let's set this dimension here to that one inch. And 
This one right here, we're going to end up doing that three inches. Now that we have that, we can set the diameter of our first hole at 125. And so that the two holes equal to each other. So we're going to come up to constraints, click on our first hole and our second hole. The cool thing about this is now is if I change this dimension, say to 0 0.250, it's going to change both holes and then I can go back to 0.125. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and come up to sheet metal and we're going to click on create this flange and we're going to set this at a new component and select our 125 aluminum. Now we're going to go over advanced features in other chapters as well and other office hours, but just make sure that that sheet metal feature matches what you're intending to make the part so that your flange lengths come out correct. Now with this, we're going to end up creating another flange. Select this top corner here, pulling this up, and we end up getting this body coming up. So we're starting to build that L out. The important thing here is just making sure that we have all of our features on the side here correct. So we're measuring from the outside face. So from this line to the outside of the flange, which is correct. And we're going to stay on the inside of this. So wherever that line is that I clicked is the overall dimension of our part. With that, we just need to change the height to six inches, which was our other dimension. And we have that. Lastly, we're going to click and create a sketch on this face here. And we're going to add those two other holes that we need to have. So let's click on line midpoint, drop it down. Now, one thing here is that we automatically locked in to make it vertical. So that makes it so that this line is wherever Wherever it's going, it has to be straight up and down. We're going to click and add a circle here and a circle up here. Let's set those dimensions to be one inch off of the top and three inches off the top here to match the other one. Now that we have that, well, let's go ahead and change this dimension actually. Let's make it five inches since we have a six inch tall flange on this side. Now, one thing that we're going to end up seeing is you can see that this line is bisected by that line. It's because we didn't make this one to be construction. Um, that's typically why I use construction lines is that you end up not having it interfere with your overall profile. So now that I have it as construction, you can see that it's one solid profile. It helps us out a little bit there. We're going to set these say at 0 0.250. Maybe it's a little bit of a different screw type that we want to use on this bracket here. And we can set these two as being equal to each other kind of rotate up, make sure that everything looks good. Clicking on solid, we're going to click extrude and we're going to do a cut extrusion through this one. Pulling that through, we have a full bracket all said and done here. The last thing though I want to look into is we have these sharp corners here, right? So as we're designing things, we're wanting to make sure things are um, a good fit and form on the end result. So let's go up to modify, click on fill it. And we're going to click on each one of these four corners here and just radius these. So when they come off the laser, we don't have to worry about sharp corners cutting ourselves when we're putting up our brackets in here. So we're just going to add a little quarter inch radius. Looks a little bit better too. And that's it. So it's just that easy to make a bracket, a simple L bend, and we have what we're looking for. To get your questions answered, make sure you put them in the comment section of our videos, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.